Raider Nation News. In this edition, music, blood, and sandwiches. Welcome to this edition of Raider Nation News, where we're embracing the Burr months. You know, September, October, November. I get it, I get it. You know, the Burr months have some of the best holidays. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and we cover it all. Let's start with Thanksgiving. Elise and Sienna served up a heartfelt story. Family, friends, and great food. When it comes to Thanksgiving, we have so much to be thankful for. In fact, we asked students and faculty at LPA what they're thankful for, and here's what they had to say. Uh, I'm thankful for my friends and my family. Easy. Chocolate. Books. My friends, my family, and the opportunity to come to a grading school. My whole class. My school, my family, and my friends. My mom, and my baby sister, and my little brother. The elementary students showed their Thanksgiving spirit with arts and crafts, decorating the halls with fall-themed art and colorful turkeys. Trot. Meanwhile at the high school, teachers were showing their enthusiasm for the holiday in their own way, with a traditional game of turkey trot. In this competitive race, teachers team up to solve Thanksgiving-themed puzzles with hopes of winning gold in the Turkey Trot Olympics. This year's puzzles included solving Sudoku, finding map coordinates, and opening a locked box to get a sweet treat. After a tough competition, this year's winners were Mrs. Hokey, Mr. Robertson, and Ms. Oidsted. Congratulations on being top turkeys! It seems they weren't the only ones racing this Thanksgiving. High school students gobbled their way to victory in this year's game of Turkey Bingo, a contest of luck, speed, and bird impersonations. Despite one student getting stuffed, everyone had fun competing. Winners even received lanyards, candy, and mini pizzas for their efforts. Now that's something to be thankful for. I was thankful I got to see Miss Amstrom kiss a cow. Yeah, it was so gross. Let's check up on the pay fundraiser. Mr. Kirkwood, the new pay advisor, outdid himself with this year's Inspire, Lead, and Share project. In total, Raiders raised $333 and about 500 hygiene kits were made with our combined efforts. On November 7th, Miss Amstrup kissed a cow. Mrs. Rebervich looked rather dashing in her costume. She wore it all day and showed off her gallop. The students are still eagerly waiting Mr. Wixo's tasty punishment. I think the elementary students had as much fun dressing up as Mrs. Rebovich. Although Halloween was almost a month ago, there are still a lot of things to recap. The elementary school was quite busy on Halloween, with kids dressing up in a wide range of costumes and marching in a parade to show off their Halloween spirit. Classrooms also took part in the festivities by playing Halloween-related games. LPA NHS took food donations for Treats for Troops, and a school-wide costume contest was organized at the high school by the student council. All the students who participated gave a valiant effort. I didn't see any costumes that were too scary or bloody. I saw a lot of blood recently. On November 16th, LPA's biannual Fall Blood Drive was held at the Lake Park Audubon High School. Students, faculty, and community members alike gathered to donate their time and their blood. Through United Blood Services, past donors returned and 14 first-time donors found out what it means to be a blood hero. With the help of the NHS volunteers, 48 units of blood Double red cells and plasma were collected. Some participants have already received notifications that their blood has been used for a life-saving transfusion. A big thank you goes out to all the blood heroes who donated. Giving blood is pretty easy, as long as you drink lots of juice or water and have something to eat. Like sandwiches? Oh, fun fact, did you know November 3rd is National Sandwich Day? Why would I know that? Well, Kevin did, and he made a sandwich that would make even the Earl of Sandwich, the inventor of sandwiches, proud. It's true. Let's check it out.
Here's a story that's a bit more appetizing. Muffins for Mom took place at the elementary the morning of November 21st. Supervised by new principal, Mr. Barr, mothers and excited children lined up for fresh muffins the cooking staff spent many hours preparing. Along with a variety of flavors came a bonding moment that filled the cafeteria with warmth to chase off the cold outside. Once everyone was done with their breakfast, trays were returned to the kitchen, hugs were exchanged, and the students were free to enjoy their morning recess as mothers continued on with their busy day. I wish I could go back to those days. Well, I think some of the seniors have gone backwards and are acting a little strange lately. Like first graders? Sounds that way. Here are Justin and Allie with actual footage to prove it. Rainbows and lollipops because lollipops taste good and um, rainbows uh, have the best colors. I like to eat carrots. Rainbows and broccoli oh. and vegetables and cupcakes are better. No. Yes, they are. Cupcakes, rainbows, no. No. and no. lollipops no. are better. No. Yes, I yes, I yes, I Definitely running and playing tag is better. No, it's not. not. It is not. <laughs> yes, it is. No, no it isn't. isn't. Okay, this is what I think. Cupcakes, ranch. That's not what I think. Cupcakes, uh, ranch, carrots, and broccoli are the best. Running on yeah. plain tank is better. Yeah. That yeah. is it. It may sound silly, but I'd still go back. Yep, back in time. On November 4th, it was time again to change our clocks to end daylight savings, moving the clocks an hour back so we gain more sunlight in the morning. However, we lose sunlight in the afternoon. Daylight savings has been occurring as far back as 1918, but many ask why. Hawaii and Arizona don't even change their clocks for daylight savings. The idea was originated by Benjamin Franklin to save candle wax, but we don't have to worry about that now. So let's think of it as a way to see more sun in the morning, but having to drive home through the dark in the evenings. It is pretty dark now, driving home after practices. That's right, winter sports have begun. Boys and girls basketball players are hustling up and down the court, wrestlers are back on the mats, and dancers have their shoes back on. Here are Allie and Maddie with a preview. The boys basketball team is back at it again. They started practice last Monday and have been working hard. Here's Coach Halberman. I, I think we have a, a, a couple different ways. We have some length this year, um, and we, we have some speed and we have length, and I think we have to utilize both of those things. Um, so certainly we're going to be a little bit different than we've looked in the past. I, I, think, um, I, I think it'll be very similar to last year and that it's going to take us a while to kind of figure it out. Um, I think we have a hard time scoring the ball. Um, but if, if we can get a couple guys, maybe two guys of, of those seven or so to step up and score, um, I think we'll be okay. The Lady Raiders are working hard being back on the court again. They started practice two weeks ago. Here's Kirkwood with the scoop. Uh, I decided to take on this adventure based on the fact that I wanted to work with a great group of young girls um, to further their skills, leadership skills. First game, I'm excited, um, kind of jump on that bandwagon. Yes, I've been coaching basketball for about nine years, but not as a head coach yet on a varsity level. So um, I'm excited for it, a little nervous, hoping to see how we do, um, hoping that we can play as well as I think we will. The UCB wrestlers are off to a good start. Let's see how they're doing. Here's Captain Bailey. I'd probably say having to push yourself through the third period if it goes into that or even overtime. The, it's a big mental game. The Mystic Dance Team started two weeks ago. This year we have three Lake Park dancers and they've been kicking away. Here's Shayla with a few words. Um, I, it's going to be a little nerve wracking. We've got a lot of younger girls on the team this year. We get on the bus early in the morning to get to the school. We get there, we warm up, stretch, do hair and makeup, go to creative teams, get back, run uniforms, practice of the dance, and then go compete. That was a look ahead. Now, let's recap a successful cross-country season. 
This year, the Raider cross country team ran way more than any sane person would. During this season, the team ran over 200 miles at practices. All the hard work paid off as they had an amazing year with many personal records from the runners. The season highlight included a trip to the state tournament at St. Olaf College. Eighth grader Tatum Nelson won the, wore the Raider colors with pride and placed in the top third of the runners at state. Good job! The Knowledge Bowl team is looking to get back to the state tournament. The senior high Knowledge Bowl season started this month with practice once a week. The team looks eager to start strong under the supervision of Coach Vite. Here is a tough question. How does Mr. Vite think the team will do this season? My hope for the Knowledge Bowl season is to learn about our team members. This is our, my first year being the leader after Mrs. Swabney's retirement, so I'm new at this, so I have, hope to get to know the kids. Um, we have some real strong team members coming back, so I hope that we do well at meet. Good luck to our Knowledge Bowl team. I know a place where Knowledge Bowlers like to hang out and soak up some skills. New chapters filled the room as the Scholastic Book Fair found its place in the library over parent-teacher conferences, giving students the opportunity to look through bookmarks and other interesting items such as pencils, erasers, highlighters, calculators, sharpeners, and posters. Of course, books aplenty were on hand to flip through. Proceeds go towards the English department at Lake Park Audubon Schools for new classroom books. Some stories pull on the heartstring more than others, covering stories of adventure, heartbreak, hope, tragedy, game guides, really anything to fit your taste in stories. The fall musical had a phenomenal story. It truly did. Here's a glimpse if you missed it. This year's fall musical was filled with drama, tears, Laughs. Oh, Urban Garden, you're always saying the oddest things. Who are you three? And even a little magic. Here are some words from the people who helped bring the musical to life. Do you guys have any memorable moments? Oh, I have one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we were talking about Morgan earlier, and she was just like played this perfect, mean teacher. But do you remember this? That we were talking about the musical, and we like broke it to them that they that her dad actually didn't come back at the end. Sarah her, Cruz. Yeah, yeah, her dad was actually dead and Maureen mm -hmm. started crying. Like it was the sweetest yeah. thing in the whole world. And she played this like terribly mean character. So I just that. What went well and what could have gone better considering the cast said her crew? Sure. Well I think probably the biggest thing is that it, this is both Miss Amstrup's and my first time directing and it was a huge learning curve for all for both of us. But um, all of the students were incredible in helping us become the best directors that we could be this year and teaching us what things were supposed to look like. And so yeah. there was a lot of learning moments that we will definitely change for next year now knowing what it's like going yeah. through it all. But um, I thought this year was really awesome overall. I did too. I was pretty pleased. We were a little bit nervous towards the end, but I feel like that's normal for every musical. And so I think the final performance was just so rewarding. Mm -hmm. and I was proud of everybody. Yeah, it was great. How do you get into character? To really get into character, you have to figure out what underlying character traits really define your character. Um, in the case of Sarah Crew, then I thought that she was really kind and really brave, and I really tried to show that through how I portrayed her character. How long have you been in musicals? Um, I've been in musicals since about sixth grade. What has helped you remember your lines? Honestly, I usually forget to memorize my lines up until about a week before the performance, and then it just hits me. The LPA Music Department also took to the stage. This month, the LPA Band and Choir showed off their musical talents at multiple events this month. This could be heard throughout the school and at their different concerts. Pop Group is working hard to sound their best for the upcoming events where we're sure they'll pull off their most kickin' event yet. Pop Group aren't the only ones practicing. Jazz Band is sounding, well, pretty jazzy, and is absolutely going to kill it at their upcoming events. On November 19th, the band played beautifully during their concert in the theater. It was exhilarating to listen to the fine-tuned notes for months of work. On November 1st, the choir sang their hearts out at an amazing concert at the school where their voices reached a new height of skill. We asked the music teachers their It'd thoughts. My, ah, it's maybe a tie, because um, it's a beautiful classical piece, but uh, we also did a medley of Beatles tunes from the Sgt. Pepper's album. 
uh, lots. I have a whole slew of um, 7th through 12th graders that made it into two different honor bands. Well, judging from the fall concert, they're fantastic. Way ahead of the curve, I would say. And I don't think I can choose uh, a favorite uh, song or even a favorite style of music. We only have eight rehearsal days till we perform December 5th at West Acres. Our next performance would be our concerts, and we have two concerts. Uh, we have one at 1.45, and we have a concert at 7.30 in the evening. Since November is National Native American Heritage Month, Dennis Rogers, a spirit dancer, visited LPA. Here's Mira with more. You know, Native American Heritage Month is a very uh, special time for me. Uh, Dennis Rogers is a proud member of the Navajo tribe and a Native American spirit dancer. He was born in Kansas and he travels the world doing what he absolutely loves, dancing. He is also a substitute teacher on the side. He came to our high school and our elementary school to talk with us a little about National Native American Heritage Month, as well as showing us some traditional and some modern Native American dances. The performances were all beautiful, and the staff and students all seemed to really appreciate his appearance at our school. Dennis also included some volunteers from our wonderful crowd of students, and he taught them how to work around their struggles with a hula hoop. Very inspirational. The day was so much fun, and for his last performance of the day at LPA, he decided to show us all some cool tricks with the hula hoops, such as the soccer ball, the soccer mom, and so many more. So much talent. I asked Dennis what his favorite part of this whole journey was, and this is what Dennis said. Take a listen. I think one of the best parts of, of teaching is that it allows me the opportunity to travel around uh, not only uh, my state, but all across the United States and visit schools like I am here today at Lake Park and uh, give other students an opportunity to uh, experience Native American heritage. As we move into the last of the Burr months, we want to leave you with a story sure to get you into the holiday spirit. On November 19th to the 22nd, the Legion in Lake Park hosted the 14th annual Parade of Trees. People from the Lake Park area showcased their creativity and holiday spirit. There were many different creations involving trees, including one covered in spam and another that was done by the Historical Society. Sunnyside Care Center made a tree, and Mrs. Minsky's tree proved why she's the art teacher. Watch next month's issue for the winners. You know, the Burr months are also the Burr months. <laughs>